Hi, I'm Nikki McDonald, Content Director at O'Reilly, and I'm here today with Marco Palladino, co-founder and CTO of Con. Hi, Marco. It's nice to have you here today. Hey there. Thanks for having me here. Okay, let's start by having you tell us a little bit about what Kong, what Kong is and what it does. Yeah. So Kong, it's an um, open core platform to intelligently broker the flow of information within the enterprise and our systems. Break that down for people who might not be familiar with how it all works. Mm -hmm. So we're transitioning to a place where lots of services are going to be communicating with each other within our systems. We are transitioning away from monolith to microservices. And as part of that transition, we're moving away from having one system to having multiple different services communicating with each other. And so when that happens, we have bigger flow of information going from one service to another, as opposed to have all this information within the monolith in a data pool. So, so talk a little bit more about um, you know, the industry trends you're seeing right now in the space. Well, there are primarily three trends that we're seeing. One of them is that, in fact, the information is going to be in flight moving forward from one service to another. And so the questions are, how do we connect these different services? How do we protect them? How do we get a sense of these architectures moving forward? The second trend we're seeing is that we're entering a cloud-native world. We're entering a hybrid world where, effectively, it's not going to be just one architectural pattern. It's going to be all of them together, depending on what kind of business value you are trying to achieve. You know, architectures change, but one of the questions we should ask ourselves is, why are they changing? And the answer to that is that our business requirements are driving that transformation. So depending if you're trying to find a product market fit, depending if you're trying to scale our systems, we might adopt one architecture or another. And the third trend is that we are seeing an explosion of different services within our systems, within the enterprise. So it's going to be thousands of different services talking to each other. And that changes everything. Oh, yeah, definitely. So, so where does Kong fit into all these new trends? How does, how does Kong, where does it fit? Yeah, so Kong helps developers to connect these different services, to protect them, to extend them, and then get the sense of all of these moving parts across different architectural patterns. Effectively, we deliver what we call a service control platform, which is a control plane that allows you and developers to get visibility on top of each one of these different services and patterns and applications, and then helps getting business value out of them by helping developers to effectively self-serve their services and find those services and communicate them and consume them and extend them and protect them and so on. So where do you see things moving next? You know, what's next for the industry? I, although it feels like um, you know, containers and microservices are still very new. Like uh, Some people we, we already adopting them, but many still haven't. What do you see, uh, where do you see the industry going forward? You know, the industry so far has been very, I call it, tribal. It's either one programming language or another. It's either one architecture or another. What I'm seeing is that, pragmatically, enterprises are moving towards a hybrid world. Programming languages don't matter anymore. As long as we have an interface that we can consume, an API, it doesn't matter how we build our services. Likewise, architectures don't matter anymore. Depending on what kind of business requirements we have, we might adopt one or another. Another trend, as a matter of fact, is serverless and functions as a service. Right? We're moving towards a world where there is, first of all, a greater importance in open source technologies. Open source is, dri is driving all of this transformation. Think of Docker, think of Kubernetes, think of uh, um, you know, Apache Kafka, think of Elasticsearch, think of Kong even. Mm -hmm. The key word is open source. It's a bottom-up transformation that's happening. Developers adopting technologies and putting them in production. And then what we're seeing is that around these open source projects, we are seeing ecosystems, self-service ecosystems that are growing around these projects that help those developers buy into a specific trend, into a specific architecture, and then grow from there. So what is it going to take? Um, we were talking a little bit before the start of the interview. What is it going to take for an organization culturally to make this work? Like, What kind of um, in, uh, like infrastructure uh, change do they have to make from a staffing perspective? Yeah, these changes in these trends that we're seeing are not just technical, technological. They're also 
operational, organizational, and even cultural in a way. The organization has to evolve on each one of these aspects in order to be successful building modern architectures or perhaps even adopting microservices or serverless. The way our teams are going to be working, are going to be working within a microservice rented architecture is going to be different than in a monolithic architecture. The way culturally we're going to enable these teams to be successful is also very different. So it's a transformation that's touching pretty much every single aspect of the organization. Can you talk a little bit about the, what the differences are um, between um, a team that's running uh, microservices versus a team that's running a monolith? Like what, what needs are there? How, how does that, how does that, what are the pain points and how does it have to change? Yeah, so for example, in a monolithic architecture, we have large teams working together on the same code base. Whereas as we transition to microservices, we're seeing more and more smaller teams, so-called pizza teams, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. In a way, you know, we're decoupling our software and we're also decoupling our teams. Our teams are becoming as decoupled, as distributed as the software we're building. And so the way these teams start working with each other, the way these teams onboard on each other's service and API is going to change. For example, the importance of documentation within internal systems. Documentation now becomes such an important factor. If documentation is not up to date, how will a team be able to consume one of those thousands of services that's, uh, you know, that he finds within his uh, you know, organization? It's going to be impossible to do that. And so the way these teams are going to be working is going to change to reflect that. When we talk about microservices, we also, in the industry, talk about dependencies between different services. Well, it's not just that. It's also dependencies across different teams. Right? So it's understanding how all of these maps together within the organization. It's going to be critical moving forward. No one enjoys creating documentation. I think that's going to be a big challenge too, getting, but so necessary with all these moving pieces, like you said. That is correct. And not necessarily the developers, the individual developers or individual teams are going to be doing that. We are seeing more and more artificial intelligence and machine learning into these systems. Obviously, managing thousands of moving parts that are just going to get more and more complex over time, it's going to be different than managing a monolith, right? And so these new technologies, machine learning, for example, can help us how to generate that documentation, perhaps, or being able to get a sense of all of that. That's something to look forward to. Um, speaking of looking forward to things, what are you looking forward to this week at Software Architecture? Well, I'm going to be personally speaking about microservices. The talk is called, uh, you know, practical microservices. So I'm going to talk about the transition from monoliths to microservices and the dangers that this transition, you know, hides within. But it's also a chance for me to get a sense of the overall industry trend. I mean, conferences like this one, where we have industry experts and enterprise architects joining, it's a great way for me as well to understand what's the sentiment within the industry and how ready are these players in their journey to microservices? You know, what's their place in time um, into this transition? Yeah, it's, a, a, it's often at the, the hallway track is one of the more popular tracks at, at, at all of our conferences. And it's, a, you know, getting to, to know the audience and, and uh, their unique concerns and really where they're at with their work is, I think, useful for the speakers and the attendees. So. Absolutely. You know, the risk it's uh, being, uh, you know, relegated in our own silos, which is always a mistake, right? Yeah. So being out there speaking with uh, potential you know, developers that could be either approach this transition or use perhaps even our product, it's very helpful for, for, for me and for us to understand you know, what's the sentiment. Yeah. Well, I hope it's a great show. I hope you have a good time. Thank you so much for joining us today. It was a, a pleasure to meet Thank you. Thank you very much.